Hello and welcome back to Tools for Sparks, the ultimate tools for electricians YouTube channel. And today I'm going to be reviewing my earth leakage clamp meter with you. A lot of you guys have been asking me over on Instagram what I use for an earth leakage clamp meter. And I must admit until a while ago I didn't even have one. I only used my Fluke clamp meter which doesn't actually go low enough to read earth leakage as such. So I recently at Elex, the tool fair, I recently got myself one of these over on the TIS stand and I'm going to show you that now. So this is my go-to um, earth leakage clamp meter from TIS. The actual part number on there for you is the TIS 560 and basically it's very simple you turn it on using this on off switch here and you've got a milliamp reading or an amp reading depending on which setting you set it on so the um, 60 amp setting obviously you're reading high so you're reading just amps and it'll go up to 60 amps there then you've got the 20 milliamp setting which you'll measure in milliamps to two decimal points and then you've got the two milliamp setting which essentially gives you a reading to three decimal places. So that's the one that's really handy if you're doing earth leakage. Say for example, just trying to think of a situation where you would use this. Say for example, you've got an RCD that's tripping intermittently and you're not sure why. This clamp meter really comes in handy for that because you can read the overall earth leakage for a whole installation. And you do that simply by clamping your clamps around the two tails, the phase and neutral tails that are coming into the property. So for example, from the main electric meter or the cutout switch or the Henley block, you take the tails that are going to the consumer unit and you just clamp around them. And what it will do is it will read the current that's flowing through those tails and it will read the imbalance and it will tell you what the imbalance is. So then you know how much earth leakage is actually going down to earth. That's important because for example, if you've got an installation where you've got already 20 milliamps uh, of earth leakage current, then it only takes 10 more milliamps to actually trip the RCD. And that could cause intermittent tripping. Nowadays, a lot of properties have lots of electronic devices and most electronic devices give off some amount of earth leakage current. And so with all these electronic devices building up and building up, you do tend to get sometimes a situation where it's not acceptable to have just one RCD protecting all the circuits or even two RCDs protecting half and half because the total earth leakage that builds up from all those various circuits can add up to over 30 milliamps or around 30 milliamps and then if it just tips over the edge it trips the RCD which is really really annoying for the customer because you imagine the situation you know you're in the middle of the day you're working at home or whatever the computer's on your you know TV somebody's watching TV downstairs or whatever and then one more electronic device is turned on or some LED lights are turned on and it trips the RCD and you lose all your power or half your power that is really irritating and that can cause the customer to think that there's a fault somewhere because normally an RCD would only trip when there's a fault but of course there isn't really a fault it's just the build-up of earth leakage across many different devices so that's why we usually well I personally install RCBOs now when I fit new consumer units so that each circuit has its own RCD protection and that minimizes the base level of earth leakage on each circuit to avoid nuisance tripping on these you know RCD consumer units main RCD consumer units and I have had it several times where I've had a customer who's had these intermittent RCD problems I have figured out, out that it's earth leakage that's the issue I've installed an RCBO consumer unit instead and they've not had any nuisance tripping issues after that. So as I say, this is very simple to use. Just clamp it around the two um, mains tails and you will get a reading of your earth leakage. And then based on that, you can decide what the issue is. It can measure ampage as well. So you can measure you know, large earth leakage currents if you so wish, or you can have it on the 20 milliamp setting where you can measure up to 20 milliamps of earth leakage. Um, so depending on the scale that you need 
and the amount of earth leakage you choose the scale that you want uh, it's got a hold button as well so that will just hold it at the current reading that's on the screen so then you can just go away and show someone or you can write it down or whatever it's a very simple thing this um, it's got a battery compartment here which basically it's just got two AAA batteries in it so it's you know battery life is, is pretty good there's no issues there um, it's nothing special I mean this is probably not the highest end earth leakage tester that's out there I'm sure there are much uh, more expensive and fancy ones but for me I don't use this kind of thing very often so it's good to just have um, a fairly cheap one that's on the van to use when I need it I can't remember exactly how much this cost me. I think it was about 60 quid or something like that. But I'll leave a link in the description to where you can get hold of one of these for yourself. Let me know in the comments what you use in terms of earth leakage um, clamp meters. I'd love to hear your recommendations. I know that obviously reputable testing companies like Fluke and Mega do their own versions of these as well, but they tend to be very expensive. So I guess it's a question of, well, how often am I going to use it? Usually for me, I will buy an expensive tool if it's something that I'm going to be using day in and day out because I want to have quality and reliability. Whereas if it's something that I'll only use maybe once a month or a couple of times a month, I don't mind going for something a little bit cheaper. Um, TIS, to be honest, I'd never heard of them before, but they were on the Elex stand and they had a big range of test equipment actually and the sales guy was very nice he explained things well to me and he gave me a good deal on this they were doing a special deal on the day as they tend to do at these kind of trade shows I don't know how how much cheaper it really is than if you bought it online but I got you know he he sold it well to me so I went for it and so far I've been very happy with it I I, I haven't used it much probably only two or three times since I got it a few months ago and um, those times that I have used it, it has come in handy. So I guess the question is, do you need one of these as an electrician? Probably not, you can probably get away with it, but under certain circumstances, it's an absolute lifesaver, uh, especially with those RCD intermittent tripping issues that we've discussed. I have basically just been doing guesswork before in the past when I've diagnosed those kind of issues. Now I can get a solid, true reading of earth leakage. And um, that is a really, really useful thing to be able to do. To then have confidence in saying, okay, you need to double up your RCD protection or you need to install an RCBA board or something like that. The readings that you get from this will give you the confidence to be able to say that without feeling like you're just guessing. Um, let me know in the comments though, what other reasons you would have to use one of these because I'm sure you guys out there probably have other situations where you use these and they come in really handy. So I'd love to hear from you in the comments of where you've used these. Maybe tell me a little story, let me know where you've used one of these, where it came in really handy. Um, or on the contrary, tell me why do you think that's a waste of money and that you don't need one as an electrician. I would love to know. Obviously the size here is, is quite restricted. So you can fit basically a, around 225 mil tails, no problem, but probably anything bigger than that you will struggle. So I'd say that's something to bear in mind. And the clamp itself doesn't open that wide. So again, it's probably only just enough to get around to 225 mil tails. Anything more than that you would struggle with. Um, it says their maximum diameter 31 millimeters. So that's the maximum recommended. And obviously you should only use it on insulated cable, maximum 600 volt cat three. I don't know, to be honest, whether you can use this around a single cable. I don't think that it actually works. If you just put it around, for example, the earth wire of an installation like the main earth, I've tried it before and it doesn't seem to read anything. It genuinely seems to need two cables, the phase and the neutral, to be able to read the difference in between. So I don't know if there are other low uh, milliamp setting earth leakage clamp meters that actually just read from a single core. That would be interesting to know because my fluke clamp meter that I use, the 325, that I use for higher levels of current testing, that 
will just read one cable. So if I put it around the neutral, for example, it will tell me the reading of how much current is going through the neutral. Whereas this, I don't think you can use it in that capacity. Anyway, as always, guys, if you've enjoyed this video, hit a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, because I do post regular tool videos here for electricians who love their tools. And leave a comment and let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching and have a great day.